friends, it's Rana and today I'll be talking about the books that I read in March. Just like February, I read exactly seven books, even though I felt like I read way less than that because the last week of March I barely read anything, I didn't read anything at all because I fell in a reading slump. I'm slowly trying to recover from it, it is really hard, I don't know why, it's been way too long since the last time I fell in such a reading slump. But I hope I get out of it. <laughs> the first book I finished in March is To Kill a Kingdom by Alexandra Cristo. This is a YA fantasy about Princess Lyra. She is a siren royalty. She is the daughter of the evil siren queen. And every year, she, on her birthday, she is supposed to kill a human being and takes his heart for herself. But since she was young, she did this tradition a little bit differently. She only kills human princes. This year she kills a human prince a little bit earlier than her usual date which is her birthday which really really angers her mother and as a punishment her mother curses her and turns her into a human girl. So she takes it upon herself to go and avenge the siren community or whatever to kill a siren slayer prince which she think may please her mother and bring her back and turn her back into her usual form. On the other hand, we have Prince Elian, who is the heir to the most powerful kingdom in the world. And he is also a pirate prince. He kills sirens everywhere he goes. He wants to avenge his friend's death, who is also a prince, by killing the siren which killed him. I really enjoyed reading this book. It was a very light and a quick read. When I started reading it, I had just finished reading The Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson, and I couldn't not compare them to each other. This book felt very simple and easy to read compared to The Way of Kings. This is actually my first time to notice the huge difference between adult and YA fantasy books. I liked both of them equally, but I think I enjoyed my time reading To Kill a Kingdom a little bit more. It was very entertaining to me to read. It was very fast-paced and action-packed. I loved it from the start to finish. It's been so long since the last time I enjoyed a YA book and I really was happy to enjoy one finally. I devoured it so quickly and I really enjoyed the enemies to lovers trope. I think it was done perfectly. I think the only thing that would have made this book better for me if it was a little bit darker and gruesome. But either way, I really enjoyed it and gave it 5 out of 5 stars. The next book I finished is Ikigai by Hector Gracias something. Ikigai is a non-fiction self-help book about a Japanese art called Ikigai. It is the art of doing something and doing it with extreme focus and joy. I listened to the audiobook on script. It was enjoyable. I liked the idea, but I found the execution to be a little bit rough. I wanted to learn about Ikigai because I have no idea what is it about. But this book focused more on how Okinawan people live long lives and it kept jumping from one idea to another without actually focusing on Ikigai. It is an okay book. I really wanted to learn about Ikigai but I found myself listening to random things and I also noticed that it relied a lot on Frankel's ideas of logotherapy more than it talked about Ikigai itself. It's an okay book. I didn't hate it. The idea is interesting but it didn't deliver what's in the title. I gave it 3 out of 5 stars. The next book is Under the Whispering Door by TJ Klune. We start the book with Willis Price. He is a lawyer and he is firing one of his employees. And we quickly come to find out that he is the most unlikable person ever. Then we jump to him in his own funeral, watching it in disbelief, shocked that everyone don't really care about him or his death because he was a, to a total douchebag to everyone around him. Then a reaper appears to collect him and brings him to a station in the shape of a tea shop where he is supposed to wait there until he finds the right time to cross over. In the tea shop, we have the manager and owner, Hugo. He is the ferryman to souls who need to cross over. Also in the tea shop, we have his Hugo's dog and grandfather, who are two souls that have been waiting the longest in the tea shop to cross over. We see how Wallace starts accepting the idea that he is dead, how he starts creating connections with the residents of the tea shop, 
and how he slowly but surely becomes a better person. This book talks about death and grieving and how to deal with them and accept them as a natural end to all of us. I enjoyed this book even though I don't really enjoy character-driven books, I prefer plot-driven books. This book focuses a lot on characters and their developments. It is a good book. I don't think it is as good as The House in the Cerulean Sea, but it is still a quite a good book and a funny one. I give this book 4 out of 5 stars. I think I would have gave it 5 out of 5 stars if it had a little bit more sad ending or an ending that pulls my heartstrings, but it didn't happen. I felt like everything went right for everyone and it wrapped up perfectly. I won't say how the book ended, not to spoil it for you, but I will tell you how I wanted it to end. I really wanted for Wallace to eventually cross over and to promise Hugo to wait for him on the other side of the door. Then we fast forward to the future where Hugo dies from old age or something and he slowly goes up the stairs to the door, happy that he will eventually reunite with Wallace. That's how I really would have loved the book to end, but it didn't happen, it is only my wish. But otherwise, it is a really great bo book and I really liked it. Then I read the 11th and final volume of a manga called The Girl from the Other Side by Nagabi. I started reading this manga two years ago and I really was happy that it finally came to an end. I won't tell you what this volume is about, but the main idea of this manga is that it is about two kingdoms, the outside where beasts live and they are under a curse. If they touch a human being, they turn them into a beast too. And the other kingdom is the inside where humans live safely. In this manga, we follow the unlikely friendship between a human girl and a beast. I really enjoyed reading this manga. It is the balance between sweetness and sorrow, wholesomeness and darkness. I was really looking forward to the final volume. The ending was cute, but a bit ambiguous and confusing. Many questions were left unanswered or unexplained about the curse, the mother, and other things. I don't know, I like this manga overall, but the ending was a bit of a let down. I think like Nagabi didn't know how to end this manga, so he gave us this ending without much explanations. Anyway, I give it 4 out of 5 stars because I still have a soft spot for it. The next book I read is Hunger by Roxane Gay. It is my second time reading anything by Roxane Gay. Hunger is her memoir talking about her body and her experience as being super morbidly obese. At the start of the book, she tells us that at her heaviest, she weighed 577 pounds and that this book isn't for people who feel fat because they gained some pounds. It is for people who are suffering from severe obesity like herself. From this introduction and from the title of this book, I assumed it will be about her weight journey, her body and how it affects her life. But it actually focused more on how and why she became this fat. She was actually sexually assaulted at 12 years old and she started eating to become bigger and undesirable to protect herself. She thought that if she became heavier and fatter, she is protecting herself and her body. I listened to the audiobook while I took my daily walks. It was very emotional and hard to read. Roxane Gay opened up about many things. I really like this book and I think it is an important one. I only, I just gave it 3.5 out of 5 stars because I really wanted it to focus more on her weight and her body rather than talking about her sexual assault, which I wasn't really expecting to read at all. Other than that, a great book. As for the last two books I read in March, I won't talk much about them because I'm planning to make separate review videos for each one of them. But I will tell you the title of each one of them and the rating I gave. The first one we have A Woman Is No Man by Top Broom. This book I give 5 out of 5 stars. I love it and I already planned my review for next week. It will be up, I promise you. The second book is A Word of Radiance by Brandon Sanderson, the first part. I 
finished this book and I'm planning to make a separate review for, for it as I said when I finish reading the second part and I don't know when that will happen because I'm in a really bad reading slump right now I didn't read a word in a week I don't know when I'm gonna finish the second part but when I finish it I'll post the review for Words of Radiance pray for me because I'm in no mood to read fantasy I just want to listen to audiobooks and I hate listening to audiobooks if the book is a fantasy book I can do that so I don't really know how I'm gonna get through Words of Radiance but I give it 5 out of 5 stars it is a higher rating than the first book The Wave Kings so I'm happy about that I know I'm gonna like the second part but I am not in the mood to read fantasy right now so that's it for today's video I hope you liked it please subscribe to see my future videos and I'll see you next time bye